Hey everyone, Justin from the Caddis Fly Shop here and uh, with the Oregon Fly Fishing Blog. Today I'm going to be tying up a Clark Stone with the man himself tying yarn. Um, we just started stocking this stuff, it's pretty cool. So I'm going to do a little twisted body, kind of extended body salmon fly variation of his, uh, his legendary fly. So let's get going here. I got a Tiemco 5212 size 8 in the vise. That's just a um, kind of fine wire, long shank, dry fly, terrestrial type, you know, just big big dry fly hook. Um, I'm going to just start my thread here. I got UTC 70 denier and burnt orange. Just laying down a thread base. Pretty much everything is the same as the original fly except for this unique body here. So <clears throat> this is just gold and silver mylar tinsel. Um, I'm going to tie this with the silver side facing me. So the gold is what shows up while you're wrapping it forward. Tying that in. And I like to stop my thread about a quarter of the way to the eye just so you have enough room to work with. for the rest of the fly. Okay. I'm just going to tie off that mylar. Trim that. Okay, so now for the body of this fly. <clears throat> this is rust and orange. I'm going to, um, I haven't tried this yet, but I think it might be kind of cool. I'm going to stack these two here. I'll kind of show you what I'm doing. So I'm going to take one piece of orange, cut that. That's about what, five inches or so. Okay. Let me find the end of the rust here. One piece of rust. Same length and everything. Okay, I'm going to just lay those on top of each other like this. And then I'm just going to start holding it with, um, with my left hand here. It doesn't matter, whatever, however you are most comfortable doing this. Um, <clears throat> with my left hand and then with my right hand, I'm just going to start twisting this stuff up. Can you see that okay on the yep. camera? Okay. Just gonna start twisting this up. Yep, and that's gonna provide just a little bit of variegation with those two two different colors. Okay. So I don't know how many times I did that, but until it's, you know, Twice. nice and nice and corded. And then <clears throat> I'm going to just kind of split that with my with my middle finger there. Let that twist. Twist, twist, twist. Okay. And then there is your extended body and you can kind of work it to I've noticed with this stuff that it tends to <clears throat> get kind of curvy on on one side, but that's okay. Okay, so here I'm gonna just tie this stuff in, and as you can see, that was a bit too much of that material, so maybe go like three and a half inches or so, just so you're not wasting it. Oops, and this is just polypropylene, so you know, very buoyant stuff. Um, I'm just gonna tie this off here. Just trim that. Okay. Oops. Uh, I need some elk hair. <laughs> Sorry. Forgot my. To the rescue. Yeah, Alex to the rescue. <clears throat> what type of elk hair? Uh, just mane or something. Kind of wisp. Kind of long. Um, so, like I said, we just started carrying this Clark's tying yarn from Lee. Um, Pretty cool stuff, and we have his book here as well. And he, in the book, has all kinds of really cool 
really cool um, things that you can do with this stuff that I never would have even thought of. Poppers and um, yeah, some some pretty cool patterns. So check the check the uh, material out and check this check his book out too because yeah. that's uh, yeah that's perfect. Thanks. So I just broke my thread there a little bit. I'm gonna just get it back in there. <clears throat> so yeah, like I said, this stuff can be a little bit unruly, but once you start fishing it and working this material, it'll straighten out. And I don't really think it matters if it's curved one way or the other. It is. So this is just a bull elk mane. <clears throat> And uh, I like this type of stuff here just because it's really, it's pretty coarse and, um, yeah, not, uh, I don't know, what would you, yeah, yeah, oh man, that looks great. Money. So, uh, <clears throat> Justin. What? <laughs> when would you uh, fish a fly like this instead of the big old chubber? So with this fly, once we get to this to that portion of it, <coughs> excuse me, um, I am going to trim the bottom part of the hackle. Um, so you know, so it sits a little bit lower, um, you know, more in the surface film. I think on more pressured fish, like on the shoots where they've seen <coughs> fifteen thousand chubbies. And, you know, quite a few of these things as well, but I think having a fair amount of different patterns is smart out there. Um, just pressured fish. I've seen a lot of that really floaty stuff. Okay, so I'm going to just tie this <clears throat> elk hair here just a little bit past that extended body portion. So. Just tie that up here. There's that. And these things really are not buoyant enough to fish like a dropper or anything underneath, unless it's an unweighted soft tackle or something, but you don't really need to do that. Um, <clears throat> so just this by itself, relatively short leader, you know, in those big back eddies and that kind of thing out on the Deschutes. Killer. So, now I am, um, I've tried this a few different ways without dubbing here, but I really, um, I'm gonna just try it with some dubbing because I've, I've had that, I've had the hackle slide around quite a bit, which I really don't like because it kind of ends up just kind of messing up the fly. All the hack will push forward. and So this is just to provide a little bit of grip for my hackle. And you can just dub that on pretty loosely. Actually, sorry, I'm going to back that off. I forgot to tie in my hackle. I'm going to just take that dubbing off here. So this is just a hackle from a from a little cape, um, kind of a badger orange or a, a burnt orange brownish hackle. Just gonna tie that in. Stem's pretty thick on this thing, so I'm gonna give it a bit of latching. Okay, that. now I'm going to dub this. I like to start forward here with the, with the dubbing, towards the eye, I mean. So we'll start right up on the eye and working our way back. That should be good. And then kind of locking everything in, going back forward. And you can see the thread in there, but that doesn't matter because it's going to be all covered up by the, by the hackle here. So. Just gonna start wrapping this. Okay. 
And like I said, that dubbing really is, and that was micro fine and rusty brown, but it really is pretty much just for uh, grip for the sackle. Okay, couple more turns. I'm just going to tie that off. Pulling this stuff back, cleaning up the head a little bit. Okay, I'm just going to pluck that feather the tip of that hackle feather and then for this kind of thing where I've not got too much room for whip finishing I just like to give it some half hitches with the end of a whip finishing tool or whatever kind of half hitch tool you have okay just to really get them locked in there so you're not trapping fibers or anything you can kind of guide it with that half hitch tool a little bit better Okay, that's that. So that thing is done. Just needs a little bit of glue on the head, which I'll do off camera. But uh, first thing here, you can see it'll lay a little bit flatter once that L carrier is on top. The body, I mean. Um, so I'm just going to take my scissors here and trim this hackle so it's flush pretty much with the hook point. Um, you can go smaller or whatever, but I think that looks pretty good right there. And there it is. The uh, twisted body, kind of extended body, Clark Stone and a salmon fly variation. Um, yeah, tie them up and go fishing. You will catch fish on these, so you don't need to let us know if you catch any fish on them <laughs> with Alex's experimental fly. But, uh, yeah, try it out. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Uh, See you soon.